Okay. And John? That's, that's based on just my call sign <coughs> alone. Yes. Yes. The fact that you keyed up on the new repeater mm -hmm. tells the group that you're, you've moved to a new repeater. So I can go to Portland and key up, then I go back to Fenway and key up, I can go over to Lake Washington and key up, I can go back out to Edmonds and key up, yep. and, and those people only listen to me for as long as I'm keyed up in that particular repeater group. The other members of the group only hear you when the your call sign is set to the group call sign. Yeah, but I'm also looking at it, say that, say that repeater four happens to be the Portland group, mm -hmm. and they don't care about the, they about don't care about the, the dribble that's going on in Edmonds for your Edmonds group. Right. And so, uh, how long does repeater four, if repeater four was in Portland, how long does it stay uh, connected to the group? Because that's, say, where you came in, you keyed up there, had your conversation, but you didn't, you didn't link off. Yeah, that's actually configurable by group. And so, the, the, the default we have right now is the minimum is 30 minutes. We can do five minutes if you want it. We can do a minute if you want it. Uh, but we're trying to find a balance there, but it's totally configurable. Great, And Great. we'll talk Wonderful. about that in a minute. Wonderful. Yeah. So, the server that's managing the group. There are two implementations. One is part of the IRCDDB gateway. If, you have, if you're running a repeater with that gateway, uh, you have StarNet groups for free, <laughs> basically. Uh, you can support up to five. Um, there's also a standalone StarNet server. It's in the same package. You download the IRCDDB gateway, and it's just one of the programs in there. Um, it's designed, if you wanted to say you had a really important group, like the state Aries team, <laughs> or... Uh, you know, the Nat, uh, some other major group, a Skywarm team. Um, you want that to be pretty solid, so you can put it in a data center with no radios attached, and it just sits on the internet and interacts with this network. Okay, uh, I don't have a slide on this, but one of the cool things about Starnet versus some of the other solutions that are, that are out there, if you lose that that uh, that server. You can go to another StarNet server, put the group call sign in, and all the traffic moves to it. So you can have a, a, a hot standby or even just on the fly move the group to a new server. Okay. Um, this is what they need to have. They have to have a gateway call sign. They need a public IP address not shared with another gateway because it's using the same IP ports that repeaters use. No special port for it. It's the repeater's port. Um, if it's RF attached, you need a club call sign. Actually, right now, you need a club call sign, whether it's an RF attached or not. We're working to try and get something so that if it's just a data center, you don't have to use up a club call sign for it. Uh, and you have to have credentials. When you sign up as a, an administrator for IRCDDB, they send you a login and password. You need that to make it work. Okay, this was to your earlier point. Groups have two timers. There's a user timer that unsubscribes an individual station if they have not keyed up in the group in a certain amount of time. Okay? There is a group timer which unsubscribes all users if nobody has keyed up in a certain amount of time. Either one of those can be set to never, or it can be set to a some value in minutes. So, um, it, it's not intuitive how you might use these, okay? So you may say you have a weekly net that runs from normally from 8 to 9 o'clock. You might set the group timer to five minutes. Mm -hmm. If nobody's talked on that net in five minutes, you want everybody off. But you might set the group timer to an hour so a person checks in once, they're still in the group, until the group goes away. Okay, The reverse may be true as well. You may have a long living group, but if, if people aren't talking on it, you want them to go away. Your classic example of driving from Portland to Edmonds. Okay? Uh, each timer is in minutes and can never expire, <coughs> and can be set to never expire. 
except in the case of a reboot, we're working on saving that state so that if you reboot the server, that it comes back. Right now, it doesn't. Uh, you can't use a tactical group. This is this is something I really want to do. Okay, but let me explain the problem. What, what would be a tactical call sign? A tactical call sign would be a group named Skywarn. Okay, so you're you're to Skywarn. Everybody on Skywarn hears you, right? Which group gets Skywarn? Okay, so you got a little bit of a problem there. Um, Skywarn is actually fairly easy because you give it to skywarn.org and let them use the A, B, C, D, E, so on in the in the last position to distribute groups to different groups in the different parts of the country. But there's you know who gets Aries? Who even gets Oregon Aries or Aries O R? Okay, it, it it it's a problem. We've got to have a way to arbitrate the way we do that. So right now. A group call sign must either use an ITU call sign, that's your US call sign or Canadian call sign or whatever. Um, and uh, we also have this exception where we accept STN with three digits. And then you can use the eighth character to create more groups. So if you want to use your personal call sign, if I just wanted to have friends of K7VE group, I could have K7VE space, 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 F, which would be my friends, and anyone that keyed on that would be talking to me and my friends, okay? You could do the same with other groups that you have. That gives you 26 for any call sign. Technical question on STN. Mm -hmm. STN, three, three numbers, or can that be three letters? It has to be numbers or? The standard we set is numbers. Numbers, and then the last digit, which is a seventh position, can be? A eighth position. Huh? The eighth position. Yeah, I'm sorry, the eighth position. Oh, okay, because you're going you're gonna to do six space eight, and then the eighth position is, what's the numbering sequence there, or the lettering? A key? through Z. Just A through Z. Okay, yeah, thank you. Plus space. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so you can actually subscribe to multiple groups, okay? So we may have the group that are bass fishermen that want to talk about bass fishing, right? And they could be all over the world. We could have the aviator group. We could have the friends of Bill. We could, that has kind of a double entendre, I think. Uh, uh, Watch it. <laughs> I know, I know your server. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you could also subscribe to your local Aries group, uh, to a Red Cross team, and so on. Those can all be subscribed at the same time. And any traffic on any one of those groups will come out of the last repeater or simplex that you transfer it. So it puts a lot of responsibility on the individual station to unsubscribe from groups that they aren't really interested in anymore. But there's some real utility to this in that uh, Aries is a classic example. You want to stay logged into your Aries group all the time. Yeah. And that way if there's a call out, you get the message. Right? You don't use it for idle chit chat. You use it for when there's a real exercise or a, a call out or a bet. But you could be a member of some other groups that hop in in, in between. Uh, so you can go about your regular operating, do whatever you want to do uh, when it's time to come to you. You like subscribe when you don't. There are a few people that I feel very strongly about this, so let, so let me express my position first. I'm an old IT guy. <laughs> Um, you know, the gray matter's leaching out of my brain into my hair um, because I've been doing it so long. Um, I don't believe you use addresses for commands, okay? And the your and the my are addresses, they're not commands. But some people have gotten so used to the linking system using addresses for commands, we do allow you to assign a second call sign to do the logout function as well. I fought it, but. There was just, well, the real problem is, is there's a group in Germany that have converted a bunch of radios to do D-star modulation. 
they don't have a TX message. They never implemented it in their firmware. <laughs> so um, you'll, you can log off either way or allow it to time out. <coughs> As I mentioned, MCOM, you could be logged into all four of these groups. Uh, as you want to talk to each group in succession, you just change the year call sign. If you learn how to use your radio correctly, and Bill can show you a, a, something that he's done with some other things, you can actually set up memory, so just flip that memory and talk to that group. Okay? So, John, what if I've got the one ham who subscribed to every group? There are guys like that. Yep. And we're in an emergency situation, and he goes and keys up. Mm -hmm. Are we now going to get every group in the planet over that repeater until the timeout happens? Uh, actually, there's some stream management there, uh, but we, we, we've got some work to do in the area of, of preventing some of those things. One of the things that we want to develop is an application that a gateway administrator could tell a group, we're in a net, we're in an exercise, don't send anything to our computer. But since this is decentralized, there's no central authority for it, you would have to <coughs> you'd have to do that to each group that was coming in. Uh, there's pluses and minuses to everything. That's one of the minuses. Um, and then change your your group to CQCQ when you're not talking to the group. So let's say I'm talking.